welcome back. Hi, I'm RJ Obrin, and we're here to uh, paint a sky and clouds and sun. <laughs> How have you all been? It's nice to be back again. Uh, I have the canvas right here, obviously, and, and no, those aren't uh, spaceships you're seeing up there. I actually, uh, about an hour ago, I was testing and I could see if I could give you a view around my studio and uh, I sort of got it so it wouldn't make you seasick, but at the same time, it was just too much. There's, it's not that there's too much stuff in here, but anyway, going around in circles is crazy. Uh, if you just join me, hello. Uh, hi, Tim. Uh, Kelly, Melanie. Oh, just people are jumping right on here. Uh, okay, well, I'm done, so goodbye. No. <laughs> so anyway, but I did tell you I was going to uh, show you something uh, uh, fun that uh, my uh, daughter and uh, her partner, Alan, uh, found for me for my birthday. And uh, I'm, of course, University of Miami is my school uh, in Miami. In my, of course, it's in Miami. It's in Florida. And I love football. So this is what they found for me. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> so I have him now. <laughs> on the corner of my desk and I come down, you know, I can just do that. It's the only bobblehead I have. I have to have one. It has to be Mickey. Um, and they also found me a really neat hoodie, uh, University of Miami. And I do have one other thing here to show you uh, that actually I bought that was clear. It was clear. It was just ceramic. It was white. And big hell. So, um, and I was still, I think, working at Disney when I got this and I painted him. Uh, with shading and everything else, and then uh, put a clear coat on it. So, Big Al, right, Big Al. Used to work on Big Al. Okay, now you saw the bubble head, you saw the painting. Let me show you what I'm doing here. This is Bay Lake, and uh, there's trees. Obviously, that's the Contemporary Hotel, Space Mountain, and way in the distance over here is the castle. Um, ignore the other part of the castle. Uh, I changed the sketch. And I was testing colors on the sky and everything for today before we started. Uh, the boat in the foreground right here is, because uh, there's more to the bottom of this painting, um, is for um, Sean and his family. And they actually sent me a picture. Uh, I'm going to show you the picture. Uh, that is them. Actually, uh, I guess some of the family is on the boat right there heading toward the campgrounds. And we've taken this now and turned it into that foreground will be on here, the boat will be on here, and of course this is all in the background now. He also sent me another picture he took that uh, shows the boat up close, so I have some detail. And that's what I'm creating. I also have uh, of course, the Donald Duck and Chipmunks painting I completed. It's still here. Um, and on the other side of my easel, there are two more. Uh, one stretch canvas of uh, a stretch room painting I'm starting on. Next to it is another canvas of another stretch room painting that I actually mounted on a flat board because after I paint it, it's going to be, it dries. We're going to roll it up and send that off. And then I have a pain, two paintings to do on Tomorrowland. I have... Uh, God, gee, I got a lot. I got a lot going. I, I'm starting one also next week. That's uh, uh, Figment. I'm tired and I haven't done anything. <laughs> but anyway, so I have mixed, pre-mixed some colors in my food tray that show <laughs> what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna create blue sky and clouds and uh, if there's time today, last thing I'll, if this dries in time, I'll create some rays of light because the sun is over here to the west, sort of behind the castle. That's the object. Oh, last night, <laughs> we sat down, it was about six o'clock, uh, Susie and I were done for the day and sat down to uh, relax a little bit and uh, we get this knock on the door and our dog barked so I went to the door so I'm trained and it was this two young ladies 
uh, Madison, who was in sixth grade, and Maya, her sisters in first grade, and their grandmother, and they lived just down the street. And they had heard that, of course, that I, I was a Disney artist and that Susie had worked at Disney and everything. And she was just so excited. She just she kept seeing our displays at Halloween and Christmas. So she had to come by and uh, hopefully meet us. Well, one thing led to another and she ended up buying our first book. And she goes, as soon as I read this, I'm gonna come back. <laughs> but they were so cute. It was nice to meet them. I guess I'll see more. They were not happy to find out that we are now looking uh, to buy a house and we are, uh, we'll be moving somewhere between Naperville and further west out toward uh, St. Charles, Batavia, or something like that. St. Charles is originally where I'm from, west of Chicago. All right, enough talk. Um, and I am going to now start painting. If you've just joined in and you haven't been on my video before, I'm, my name is RJ Ogren. I was a uh, audio animatronic artist at Disney World in the 70s, uh, left there in 1980. My wife went on to work for many more years. And there were four of us. We took care of all the figures and all the attractions, uh, all, everything in the attractions. So Pirates, Country Bear, uh, uh, Haunted Mansion, Carousel of Progress, Peter Pan's Flight. And it's led me to these. So I'm, and I'm using a big brush this week instead of the tiny brush. So, oh, hello, Chris, Stacy, Leanne, everybody's joining in. Share this with your friends. And this is kind of fun because I can put a lot of color in and uh, paint over these test colors that I had put on here before. And let's see, we'll come up this here. Air. I know it doesn't make any sense right now, but there are going to be clouds and some blue sky. Um, and also I have to do two coats. So we'll get some base colors on here first and let it dry so we can go back over it. Finish what? I think I set this up so you could see most of the canvas. I want you to know that every week after I finish one of these, I have a crick in my neck. I think like, oh, oh geez, because I am sitting sideways. So why not? There we are. Blue is my favorite color. Well, I have blue eyes. Wasn't born with them, I just painted them one day. And uh, I, oh, I haven't put my glasses on. I'm amazed I can still see what I'm doing here. There, there. Okay, I'm gonna go in with a, a lighter shade of the same blue. This is cerulean blue and white uh, that I'm using, but then when I start doing some of the, the clouds, I'll be using some gray and also a little bit of lavender in with the blue. So we're going to put this right under this darker blue and we're going to blend that in. All the way around. Now when you're blending two colors, um, especially when you're working in acrylic. After you put the two colors next to each other, you can crisscross uh, on that and then start back up on the top and go back and forth. And you get a nice blend of the colors. There we go. Hello. Oh, there's Suzanne. Say hello, Suzanne. You're hello. not on. Hello. She's not Please on. Don't she put goes, me on too. no, don't put me on. <laughs> Say hi to everybody. Hello, everybody. You, you get to hear her voice. I'm sorry. I can't ask you this question right now. Oh. It concerns business. Oh. I'm leaving. Bye, all. Well, that was short, but sweet. 
<laughs> she forgot I was on. I forgot I was on. Okay, I'm going to uh, uh, switch brushes here because I'm going to uh, put on some base colors of other things. And I'm going to do, uh, there will be some clouds in here. It, it looks great, but it actually is a, a lavender. And again, I'm just getting base colors on now. So this will change some as I go into it and I can paint around the contemporary that I've laid out here. They don't have to be exact, but I don't want to paint over too much of it here. When you're, when you're painting the sky, you have to paint into uh, uh, the objects that are in the foreground in front of it so that when you then paint that object, like the contemporary here, you're, it doesn't look like you, uh, as an afterthought, decided to paint uh, the sky. I've, I've seen people do that. They'll they'll uh, do the sky last. And of course, then you see all the brush strokes as they try to carefully paint around what they've already painted in the foreground. You always want to work from the back to the front. Base colors. And actually, there'll be a tree over here. Am I still in? No, I'm going right out of the picture. Just, just watch my hand. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll keep talking, even though you can't see that. <laughs> and actually, as it, uh, uh, I know you can see this right here, as it comes down in that cloud cover, which is in the distance, it's going to get a little lighter right there. So I have a lighter blue that I'm putting in now. Oh, oh, paint over the monorail. Uh, I will have monorail red going into the contemporary. I drove monorail red a number of times. So it would be Suzanne. And always so I mean, I hate that you can't let people go in the cab anymore. That's, that was always the most fun thing to do. Anybody? Okay. Uh, keep it up, Mr. Ogren. Thank you, Andrew. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's go across here. Let's put some more this in. And uh, how can we get one of your pictures? Oh, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, if you go on, uh, well, you're on Facebook. Just message me, and I will be glad to give you uh, information. Uh, I do all my uh, all my work is commissioned. Yeah, I have ideas for paintings I want to do, but I don't have time to paint them because I'm doing all these paintings on commission, which is great. I love it because everybody comes up with great ideas. Um, and I have so much fun. One I'm going to be doing in Tomorrowland is a, a couple uh, in their, her, she's in her wedding dress. He's in his uh, tuxedo. And uh, also, I've added their dog in at their request um, in Epcot <laughs> with Spaceship Earth behind them and the monorail being there. The monorail coming. That's going to be fun. All right. Um, now I'm going up with a little more color here. You're, right now, you're going like, where are the clouds? They're, they'll get there. I have to have some blue in the background here uh, that I will paint over. Darker right here. Blend that in. Cross hatching there and then back and forth. Make something on that back corner there. Make something over there. Oh, now I have a blue finger. But put it on my nose. And <laughs> oh wait. I, I do have I I have my uh, mood mug of the day. One of my favorite mugs of the Sorcerer's Apprentice. There's the wizard on the back. Stay with me. I'll, I'll be with you in a minute. Then I have a coffee break. 
Okay. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, if you are interested in a painting, just message me. I could give you all the information. Tell me what you want. I have different size paintings I can do. And uh, right now, <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know. Uh, all right. If you just joined in, uh, actually uh, an hour before I started this video today, I was trying to do a, a circular swing around my whole studio so everybody could see it, but it was just too difficult to do it with the, with the laptop and make it look right. Um, but one of the things I did want to show you all, uh, which I can't right now, is actually a, a shield of the American flag with a banner across it. It says 1776 to 1976. I'm looking, that's why I'm looking at it over there. You're like, what are you looking at? That actually hung on one of the lampposts on Main Street at Disney World during the bicentennial. And uh, right after they, uh, the bicentennial year was over, they uh, put, the, uh, put those in the shop for uh, employees to buy. There was a mad scramble. I heard about it and ran to the <laughs> basement under under uh, Main Street where they had the shop so I could get one and I got lucky. So right there. Okay. I've got my light set too so it lights me some and normally um, it looks pretty good to you on here I, I guess it with the lighting but it is a um, definite problem when I'm trying to see because I can't see a lot of stuff that's going on. It's all fake. It. And, <laughs> and while this is still wet here, I'm going to paint in a lighter color in this one. I've got a halo, a little cloud, and I'm going to paint all around. Uh, space Mountain, there. Okay. Part right there and Space Mountain is taking shape. Now, actually, from this viewpoint, I'll explain this because um, I know a lot of you are going like, wait a minute, there's another uh, part of the contemporary hotel that was built. Well, for this painting, um, I left it out because the request was to be able to see, and I thought it was nice to be able to see the Space Mountain and the castle. And if I put that other part of the contemporary in here, they'd be right where I'm painting it. It's part of the mast sticking out right there of the boat. And so I think I'm going to paint that. And actually, the heck with it. I'm going to paint right over it. It's what I had fixed already. So, <laughs> so in reality, though, by uh, what you actually see is if you're in this right spot, the, the new part of the hotel is like right here, and you would be able to see Space Mountain, but not this much of it. It'd be a little lower down. But for dramatic purposes of this painting, you want to see it. Now, also the castle, this is going to be a little bit higher, uh, a little bit closer to you than in reality. Or doesn't that look like the castle? Sure, that looks like the castle. I'm back. <laughs> so I'm, oh, I'm over on, oh, you can see that. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and if you're wondering what all this is um, around down in here, those are, that's going to be trees. There'll be trees here. You'll see some of the uh, stuff in front of the contemporary where it goes into the, this. And I've created an extension out here uh, with more trees. The whole idea of this is when I get down, I'll be painting the water in and then we'll have the, the ripples of the water. Uh, you'll see the reflection of the boat down here in the water and a little bit of the ground in the foreground. Um, so again, for those of you who just joined us, hi. <laughs> and if you just joined, you missed the bobblehead. Not me, it's Mickey bobblehead. This is a picture that they sent me of the boat they would ride in 
out to uh, the campground. So as you can see, you don't see the hotel in there or anything else, so I've added all that in. And now you get the, the scope of the whole thing. There's about, uh, on this side here, there's about three or four more inches beyond uh, that I couldn't get in the frame to make this work. Um, okay, now I'm going to put in a little bit of white just for coverage. Um, and then we're going to have to let it dry. So what I'll do is um, very quickly. Let's see, we're going to create some clouds here. Looks more like a spaceship. Ah, uh, okay. Very loose. There'll be even more as I go along in my video. Um, there'll be white edges to some of these clouds. Uh, there'll be some darkness um, in front of this that I'll paint in. I just want to cover these parts of the room so that when I'm up there, there'll be a big cloud on this side. Over here where you can't see? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. And I'm not going to do here. This is this is all uh, clouds going off in the distance. That's why it's lavender right there. Um, and there'll be more clouds in here, a little bit of darkness. And I'll have some rays of light coming from off the canvas on this right side, um, certainly shining onto the castle. So uh, while we're waiting for that to dry, I will uh, actually start painting in some base color on some other things. Won't be as exciting right now, but it's kind of fun. Okay. Um, see, I need to put in these base colors on the different objects in the painting too. So when I I'm actually just blocking in colors. Um, oh, Karina. Well, thank you, Karina. Yes, I enjoy doing this. Um, they let me out of my cage once a week. Yeah. <laughs> or should I say my rubber room? Uh, I sometimes think I am in a rubber room. There are those days. I can see that's kind of going, if, if it's showing up there, it's kind of going a little bit gray. Uh, that's because I like to lay, I just lay everything out in uh, a number two pencil on the canvas. Uh, then, but then by putting uh, the base coats on or blocking in a in color, it actually blends in with the pencil, but it'll dry and give me something good to, to paint over. And castle here, is part of the main tower. We're seeing it from that angle. And let's see, there's one spire there, another one there, down in the trees, another spire. Trust me, <laughs> it's there. All right. And in fact, I can do that with the monorail too. I've mentioned before that uh, you know browns, uh, brown colors in acrylics and in oils uh, dry a lot faster than other colors. And too bad I'm not working with a brown sky; it would probably already be dry. Doesn't that look like the monorail now going in? <laughs> All right. Uh, now I will quickly. I'm lost. I didn't want to do. Put in some 
just a base color on the water here, using some of these same blues. And that'll change. You'll be able to see a little bit more of what's going on here. If I do this. Because actually this is going to uh, reflect the sky. Paint around the boat. Yeah. All right. I always like doing that. I did a painting. I did a painting years ago of uh, this little village, little church uh, uh, across the water. Uh, and it was an autumn scene, and you had all the trees uh, were in front. You, all you saw was the spire of the church, and, and behind the trees. And of course, all all the way. It was a long painting too. I think only about 16 inches high. And we ended up giving it to Susie's parents. And um, actually, I think one of our kids got it now. But anyway, um, it, um, I loved it because I painted the reflection of the water, all the trees and all the colors and the church. When I got all done with the thing, uh, at one point when we moved, um, we had it hanging up and realized it was upside down because it looked the same both ways. Uh, somebody says, why is your name upside down and on top? Um, that won't happen here. Now, I will paint some of the reflection in the contemporary uh, in a little bit of this. You'll see maybe there's that much of it coming down on the water here. My, my, okay, now I'm starting to go out of, out of the picture, so I won't paint all the water today. You don't want to watch me, my arm moving back and forth and nothing happening. But I'll, I'll come up with the boat. I'm actually a guy standing on the front of the boat here. Okay. So we'll move over here. And I'm going to do a little bit of this. There's a, a, I think it's a light on the top of the boat right there. There's the, the smokestack. Smoke stack with a little tiny stack on top of it. Maybe I can get that. Picked up the wrong color. And oh, I want to grab that in the right place. Again, this is only a base color I'm putting on. Dry. So we have a nice thing going on here. And we'll put in some more lavender right here. Top part of the boat. Yeah. And I'm, yeah, I'm still in the picture. Okay. Just checking. A little dark color. Posts on the boat that hold that up, hold the top on. So that's not solid. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. <laughs> okay. BLT is missing, artistic license. Um, yeah, uh, if, if you just joined in, I did not paint in the, uh, the new part of the contemporary because we wanted to be able to see Space Mountain and Castle in the distance. Uh, there's also technically one of the two story parts, or two or three story parts of the hotel over here on the left, but I've elected to put trees in. Our main focus for this painting really is the boat in the foreground uh, with the family in it. And we're really getting there. Hey, all right. Look at that. 
Okay. I think we can actually do something here. Okay. Uh, that's cool. Oh, thank you, Jeffrey. And uh, enjoying all of you being part of this. I'm having a lot of fun. So I'm going to wait just a couple more minutes. And uh, while I'm doing that, I was going to show you something else. And I don't remember what it was, so I'm not going to. Oh, I'm going to have coffee. It's like rambling, you know, just keep talking, RJ. <laughs> like I said before, it'd be fun if I could actually hear you, uh, hear your comments. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I do have something to show you that I actually got um, a couple weeks ago. We went to Virginia to do a book signing. And, um, of course, I was in the service uh, in the Navy uh, in Vietnam as a photographer. And uh, then years later, I was in the National Guard. There's stuff on the wall here. I actually have my helmet uh, from when I was in the Navy and uh, uh, was on the swift boat that got blown up. But I wish over the years that I had kept one of my uh, Dixie cups or what the white hats are called that the sailors wear. And hold on, I'll be right back. I've got, I've got one. Thanks to um, our good friends down in Louisville and their daughter-in-law, who is in the Navy. And she just re-upped, um, which is really cool. So she actually got, you know, you can buy cheap ones, but this is the real thing. And boy, is it bright in this light. And I watched the, tried to watch the movie of, uh, that just came out last year about uh, the Indianapolis that was sunk in World War, at the end of World War II. And, uh, on a secret mission carrying the atomic bomb over to be dropped on Japan. And uh, they were going to Tinian Island. But I was only 15 minutes into the movie and it was so bad. Uh, it was terrible. The worst thing about it was all the sailors were wearing Dixie cups, but they were wearing them and they were perfectly round, which is how they wear them now. I don't know why they do that because up until about 1975, we would take our hats and shape them so that they had a, a neat look to it. You tilt it on your head and everything else. You, you don't let them do that anymore. What a bummer. Okay, this might be dry now. <laughs> oh, so. Oh, yeah, now we can do that. Okay, here we go. Onward. Rambling about that and getting my big brush over here behind me. Maybe next time I'll put it over there. <laughs> Just ignore me. Okay, now um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm looking at the time. Oh, we're, we're a half hour into it. I'm going to go ahead and start painting the clouds and stuff so you can see that. Uh, probably what I'll have to do when I'm not live anymore is go back in and, and paint over some of the blue again. I don't want to do it now because it won't be dry for me to do the cloud. Does that make sense? Okay. Just ignore that man in the, in the purple shirt. I had to look down to see what I was wearing. Okay. I have injuries to my to my hand. Uh, that's from Vietnam. And uh, uh, also an injury to my foot. I decided yesterday I would try to be more relaxed and just wear my slippers. Uh, an old pair I have is so when I'm painting, I can be comfortable. Now, by the end of the day, my foot is swollen. And I can't. Okay, we are going back to the uh, white first. And now I can actually do some things with the cloud shape. And as this dries a little bit, I will. I'm giving it a light touch. I'm trying to feather it a little bit to give it a interesting look. We don't want boring clouds, do we? Yeah. And 
then I'll come back over it with some um, some grays and other colors. I know what you're thinking. I know where he's going to put hidden Mickeys. Uh, yeah. Better believe it. <laughs> I just did a painting. Well, every painting I do has got hidden Mickeys in it somewhere. And I sometimes uh, paint myself and Suzanne into the painting. Oh, uh, yeah. As I talk softly, it starts sounding like Bob Roth. No trees today. All right. I'm going to edit the whole thing out here. Oh, lots of gloves over here on this side. Yeah. You're probably wondering why I painted it all blue to start with. I wasn't quite sure where I was going to put all the clouds when I started, so that's why I just painted all first and did it that way, and then just paint over it because I wanted to do it. Um, Know that looks a little wacky, but you'll you'll see why in a minute. Because I'll come back in and, and just blend it in. I'm going to do some more over that way. But right now, I'm going to do some more over here over this lavender I put on. So normally, I wouldn't be painting this well, sort of this fast at this point, but. Uh, once I get into clouds, I, I would slow down a little bit and uh, do a little more details. I certainly would let it dry a little bit more. But anyway, all right. Now we got that on there. And now I'm going to go actually to a gray that I missed. And Over the white, I'm going to lift it. I'm doing it while it's still kind of wet, so it will blend in some. Uh, somebody suggested, which was a great idea, that I should have, uh, uh, well, I guess, an iPhone right here, where I could see your questions easier and I wouldn't have to look at the screen. But uh, I don't have one. I have a phone, but I don't have one. Um, I, believe it or not, I'm not. I don't use my phone a lot. I do text. I do text, but um, I don't get a lot of phone calls on my phone, which is good because I I don't have a lot of time to have lengthy conversations. I guess that means if you call me, I'll just go, hi, you know, nice talking to you, bye. Um, just, just talk among yourselves. I'll sing to myself as we go along. Uh, okay. Bring the white back over here. I've got it in a separate cut. And again, I have to mix fairly large amounts of this stuff. I, you can see I'm blending this as I go along to, to get this, this feeling I want. Don't 
start singing to. Uh, but <laughs> a little bit darker cloud here. This will be fun because I, when I'm done here today, I'll still have to come back in uh, tomorrow and paint the top edge of the painting and the sides, so I have to make it look like the cloud is wrapped right around it, which is a nice look. Uh, early on, many years ago, when I was still painting in oils, um, and I would always stretch my own canvases, which I still do. Uh, some of them I, uh, I'm able to buy already stretched, others uh, with unusual sizes, I will stretch myself. I stretch this one. Uh, the stretch room paintings, I have to stretch. Uh, I must be tired. <laughs> RJ's losing it. Okay. I'm, I'm actually it's all it's it's like scumbling. I really I, I my brush is almost dry. There's almost no paint on it. Just not really over it very much. Um, letting the brush do a lot of the work for me, and I can come back in afterwards and do some little bit of detail on it. All right, now. Now that I've done some of that, I can pick up on this again right here where I had the white on the bottom. Yeah, red. There was red paint in that. Uh -huh. Hello, everybody. <laughs> How you doing today? Um, I, I try to look every so often to see if anybody's asked a question. And no questions on that one. Or on this one. Okay. A little lavender in here. Okay, more lavender. That's where the red came from. I just complained about it. Piece of bread that actually had dried and it was it's so much fun painting sideways. All right, and I'm going to go down below this with a little more lap. in there and then I'm going to blend in this light blue into that try not to paint over the shape that I have there and actually as we get down to the bottom here I'm going to come in with some white it's way in the distance on the horizon. It does get lighter as you go down toward the horizon. So, try to blend that in with the light blue. Hi, everybody's still with me. Hi. Um, Again, glad to have you with me. I enjoy doing these. And oh, and thank you all for your comments when I asked about uh, doing this for an hour, uh, if you could stand it. I, I actually have the timer here and I have about 20 minutes left. Wow. Which means I can be a little more uh, detailed now uh, with the clouds. There'll be a test on this later. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going to change to a small. 
smaller brush. This one. So that I can um, do a little bit of detail work with in some of these clouds to make them look a little more realistic. I'm using white right now. I'm using a round brush. Hey, it's starting to look like a cloud. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> okay. I'm mixing actually some white with the gray to make this a little lighter. A little bit of white. How's everybody? Uh, Linda. Hi. Hi, Linda. <laughs> Thank you from Chris. Oh, hi, Chris. Uh, Sean, I see you're on there still. Sean is still with me. Hey. Actually, Sean knows about this camera. <laughs> That's a good name. Sean. It's our son's name. Who went when, <laughs> when our son was young, actually quite a few years, people used to call him Seen. It's S E A N, Sean. It's the, he said, no, no. So, see, this is fun. It's therapeutic. Winston Churchill was a painter. He actually did some really nice stuff. Quite a good painter. I don't know why I just thought of that, but I'm just throwing that. Oh, there was some painting, I don't know if you just saw it, it was on the news, that sold, and it was this guy that does these things that are just bizarre. And it's actually the kind of thing we could do in art school where you worked real fast and just made something and threw some colors on it and made a face and it was like really ugly. Well, that's what he did. And the thing sold for millions of dollars. And <laughs> I should start doing Now, do you see that? That's because, you see where it lifted the, the paint right there? I'm just going to leave that alone. That's because um, it is not quite dry. I just painted into that spot. But here I can. See, normally, I would wait and paint on something else. I'd wait for this to dry for about a half an hour or so to make sure it was good in here. So that, that wouldn't happen. I know what. I need more coffee. Welcome to the show. Oh, I oh, 
Kelly, I find it therapeutic to listen to your stories. You're pretty crazy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad it's therapeutic. I should listen to myself. It probably would be a big help. <laughs> uh, and Linda, you wish you could do this. Um, everybody can to some degree. I, I think everybody is. I used to teach art. Oh, I, this is funny. I taught, I only taught for one year in public school right after I graduated from the University of Miami. And uh, being uh, a young artist and uh, a teacher and trying to be really clever, which, which actually we had a good time. I decided I had an eight millimeter camera that could do single uh, motion, a uh, single shot. In other words, you could, you could sit there and click it and just get one frame uh, in the film. So we could do stop motion. And you've seen the stop motion in uh, uh, movies that, uh, uh, geez, Tim, Tim, what's his name makes? Ah, ah, that's always funny. Uh, you, my wife laughs at me. I can think of somebody, I can think of the movie usually, but I can't think of their name. And, uh, but anyway, the stop motion thing was a, was a neat idea. And uh, I, I told all the kids, I had six classes, that we were going to make sets uh, that were about four feet by five feet in size, miniature sets, have these little figures that we could move and, and shoot one frame at a time. So if you had a figure raising its arm, you had to shoot a frame here, 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 as the arm went up. Well, they got really clever, and one was uh, called Mush, but it was actually a takeoff on MASH, and we actually had helicopters that flew in and landed. And <laughs> they were short films. I think they were like three to five minutes long, um, and uh, they had a contest at the end of the year. It was really funny because one of my favorites was we did one that was the um, uh, from a, a, a routine about this monster, this thing that grows and attacks New York City and overtakes it. It's just like this massive stuff. And so they used clay and it kept adding to the clay and it got bigger. The science department got involved and, and, and the science teacher, he came in and showed the kids how to use magnesium on the telephone wires. So the thing would hit the wires and they, they would go and spark and flare up. And it was a lot of fun. Well, the newspaper came in, they heard about it and uh, they did a big article about me and, and the kids and the movies, and especially this one that we were making. And the day after that came out, uh, the principal called me in and says, uh, a woman wants us to fire you. <laughs> I went, what? She said, you're teaching. She said, you are teaching bad things to the kids, blowing things up like that. It's a comedy. It's like, well, anyway. She was the only one who complained. Everybody else liked it, I think. So. Almost lost my job. <laughs> okay. Get a little bit in here. There we go. Now, actually, I'm going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to get a little bit darker. I've got some black that I'm going to mix in with some of the gray. So I can make some uh, some darker clouds. I want this to look sort of like it's it's the late afternoon storms that come in over Florida. The beginnings of one. The uh, When I was at Disney, we, we got off every day at uh, 3.15. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a weird time. Uh, but anyway, so I'd be driving home. I did not live close to Disney. We lived on the other side of Orlando um, in Maitland. And a great place to live. So I'd drive home uh, up I-4 and Invariably, almost every single day, 
I'd have one of those afternoon storms, those squalls. Get really tired of that. <laughs> all of a sudden, sunshine, and all of a sudden, five minutes of rain, and then it's gone. But the, it wasn't funny when it happened. What happened to me one day is that I was in our, our new Camaro, and I had gone out to have lunch with Susie. It's, it's actually actually after I left Disney. Um, I went out to have lunch with her, and I was coming back, and one of these downpours happened. And I mean, it was really gully washer. And I didn't see it until I was already in it, and we had about probably about three inches of water large section of, of pavement it was just before you went into Orlando and I hit that doing about 55 60 I had slowed down some but obviously not enough because the car started to sail right across that just like skimming on a sailboat and I started to revolve and all of a sudden I realized I had now straightened out but I was backwards and sliding backwards and the cars with their headlights on are coming toward me. And I thought, oh dear God. And just at that moment, the car kept right on rotating. And I did a 360 and then managed to pull over the side and pull off on the, on the, actually the inside of the highway there. I, I don't think I started up again for about 15 minutes, but I tell you, I made sure it wasn't raining anymore. Uh, <laughs> that was crazy. How are we doing on time here, folks? I have seven, eight minutes left. Um, and please share this if you if you like. And uh, let's see, I got some more dark clouds in here. So when you see this painting the next time, I will have these. Obviously, these clouds will all be done. Next week, I will either be finishing this up, or I'll be actually working on one of the uh, stretch room paintings, or even the figment. I don't know. So please join me. Take a little bit of white. So that's it. Anybody commenting anymore? Did I lose everybody? Am I still on? <laughs> I see nobody's making comments. Oh, RJ just rambling. Whatever. I'm going to go with a little bit more black. And I think next week I had a had a paint on the uh, stretch room one. So I have two of them I'm doing. I actually have another one I'm supposed to do too. It is the uh, um, the man on the standing on a dynamite barrel. That'll be fun. I haven't done one of those yet. Did I lose everybody? Did I put you to sleep? Oh, still here. Oh, thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Sean, still. You're still here. <laughs> well, there's two people. Okay, cool. Oh, wait. Cindy's here. Um, <laughs> Cindy McGovern. Hey, Kathleen. How are you doing? Good to hear from you. Been a while. All right. Um, what am I doing? Oh, yes, painting clouds. Uh, a little more white. Some of them are blue.
fucking one. Lab. Two. So it's a process doing cloud. You know, you got you got to keep blending your colors together, and I want to get an edge to these clouds that's white, so that you get the sun coming through there which is is up here so this up in this corner in fact i'm going to do that right now i'm going to paint in some white and i'm going to switch to my brush so now they paint they're full of paint hold on wait a minute and that's going to be cool there we are i'm going to put that down and i'll do this Oh, it looks so easy. I, 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 you're right, Lisa. It, it was, or is, sort of. It's just that I've been doing it a long time. Actually, clouds are one of the things I have fun painting. I like to do skies. I like to do uh, stormy skies. I've done uh, seascapes uh, with storm coming in off the ocean. What's funny was all the years I lived in Florida, I only had like two people that ever requested a seascape. And then when we moved away, then people started asking me for seascapes when I was living up north. Go figure. Uh, so, yeah, get some disadvantages. There we go. sun is off to the side of the painting. If you just joined in, um, I'm almost done. Well, not done with the paint. But the sun is over here, actually off to the right of the painting, coming across. And uh, uh, next week, as I'm painting this, and I'll paint the castle in right here uh, in the distance. And there'll be some light rays coming down at an angle right here onto the castle. You know, I didn't take I didn't take art in high school until my senior year, um, even though I'd been doing art for quite a while, and I had never painted um, in oils. And the art teacher thought that would be good for me to try. And my first two that's the stop one. Uh, my first two paintings. One was a seascape at night. Uh, started out okay, but by the time I was done, they were so muddy. They were <laughs> they were terrible. Um, I did not keep those paintings. In fact, I've got about minute left here before I leave you for the day. I want to thank all of you for joining me again. I, I hope you enjoyed the clouds forming <laughs> over Disney World. And uh, I will be sure to, to show you all this uh, when I finish the, the sky. I'll probably take a picture of it so you all can see the sky when it's done which is the first thing I'll do. Uh, you, you, again, you want to paint from the background and then paint forward. So I'll paint, I'll paint
finish painting the sky and all the clouds and everything, including those rays of, of light coming down. And then uh, I will paint the uh, castle and I'll paint Space Mountain. And then I'll paint in the trees here uh, that you see. And then I'll paint the contemporary and monorail red. And I'll paint the, the trees and everything on this little outcropping of land here. Then I will paint the water. And I will paint the water down, actually all the way down. There will be some foreground down here at the bottom. And uh, I'll paint the boat last, just about. And I think it will be last. And then I'll paint a reflection of the boat. And as I'm painting the water, I'll do reflections of the contemporary, and not the uh, space mountain that's too far away. Uh, but you'll see a little bit of reflection of the, the trees as you get closer. So once again, here I am. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I realized I did not, I did post the uh, one from last week um, on different uh, Facebook sites and I, had not gotten around to put it on my uh, website, our website. Uh, our website is rjorgan.com. Uh, it was my website, but once our books came out, we decided to make it for both Suzanne and I, and that's worked out quite well. And it was just easier to leave the domain name as RJ Ogan. Um, oh, thank you, Sean, um, since this is for you. Already looks like a photo Clouds are amazing. Oh, great. I'm, oh, well, then I'm done. That's it. Painting's done. Not doing any more. It's the weekend. We're going to go looking to see if we can find a, a house to buy. We just started that process, so... Uh...